superintendent of schools has decided to take out an ad against one of his own students. Interesting, this is an update, all because of the student's hairstyle. Let's put it up full mass. You remember this, Texas, that guy is Dr. Greg Poole. Dr. Greg Poole defended the continued suspension of the young Daryl George. You see, Dr. Greg Poole has the top job in this Texas district, went to school for a long time, got his doctoral degree in order to go against students in the local media. This was over his locks hairstyle, full page newspaper ad paid for by an education foundation. Daryl George, the young man has been suspended repeatedly by the Barbers Hill Independent School District for his hair. The teen's family filed a federal civil rights lawsuit saying the punishment violates the Crown Act, and it does. Let's put up the ad. The ad that appeared Sunday in the Houston Chronicle was written by the superintendent, Dr. Greg Poole himself. One of the quotes, being an American requires conformity with the positive benefit of unity, he stated, referencing strict codes at the military academies. Quote, we have taken the highly unusual step of seeking a declaratory judgment in state district court to verify our interpretation. Poole went on to write, now a declaratory judgment is basically when an entity seeks a decision prior to full judicial litigation. Um, they're looking for a judge to declare that you are right on your interpretation of the rules, declaratory judgment. All right, let's put up the family and the leaders, so called, who are against them. So the family of George filed the lawsuit against Governor Greg Abbott and the state attorney general, Ken Paxton. This is in the Texas Southern District Court, arguing that they failed to enforce the law outlawing discrimination based on hairstyles. Keep the picture up. The family is correct in their lawsuit, in their interpretation, in the assertion. The school district, they're not seeking remedy from the federal court. Remember, the federal court is the entity that would enforce federal law. They're seeking remedy through state court, hoping that the state court will have a vastly different interpretation of the constitutional protection. So Poole alleged that the family's lawyer said she wants to bankrupt the school district and its leaders during the legal proceedings. The district's policy does not prohibit students like George from wearing locks or braids, but it does limit hairstyles for boys, banning anything, quote, that would allow the hair to extend below the top of a t shirt collar, below the eye, uh, eyebrows, or below the earlobes when let down. Okay, that's their claim. So, Poole's letter in the ad says the child moved to the district from one that allows longer hair. And every family has to sign an agreement to follow the district rules. Quote, ultimately, this is an issue of local control and deciding who should be settling the, set, setting the policies, goals, and expectations of our school district, who wrote. The messenger has reached out to the Barbers Hill Education Foundation, which paid for the ad for a comment on the advertisement. No comment yet. Uh, they are literally conspiring against a child who actually is right on the law and citing the insanity of, well, he moved out of a district that allows such things to a district that does not. You see, you can't really waive 
your actual legal and constitutional rights in a government operation. Understand that the school receives government funding. The rules that apply must be equitable to all. If you read his op ed, if I can call it that advertorial more than anything, if you read it, he actually admits, Mr. Uh, superintendent actually admits what they are doing is unfair to one gender. He admits that. He doesn't go as far as to talk about the race issue, but he does admit to absolute discrimination, which, by the way, is prohibited, regardless of what someone signed. All right, Wasney, this is a hell of a thing. Um, I remember there was a guy a few years ago, right? He took out an ad as well against um, some young black kids because he believed that, uh, well, believed it or not, he wanted people to believe uh, that they, in fact, should be killed. Um, and he never <laughs> retracted that, even though the evidence was contrary to his own proclamation. This seems to be the same spirit here, different circumstance. Yeah, in 2024, the idea that we're still adjudicating stuff like the hair of young black people is absurd. And I do want to get to the core of this guy's idiotic argument about um, the things that people have to conform to within the military. One, the military is an all volunteer force. Uh, right. As opposed to this young man going to high school, which is compulsory, meaning he has to go to school. You know, he has no other choice. He has to be at school. And so the idea that a place that he has to be at is forcing him to uh, change his air, which doesn't disrupt his ability to learn in school or others. And, you know, this is before we get to the right of this guy uh that's it's ridiculous and again in the military and, and, we're, and we're citing this because this is what this guy cited in his argument in the military we're training our official killing machine <laughs> okay <laughs> like you're training when you're gonna be in situations where you can pay the ultimate price we we can understand this idea that everybody needs to conform to these rules because they're gonna keep people alive why are you comparing school high school to the military, it just makes absolutely no sense. Uh, and of course, obviously, this is racial in its discriminatory nature. Uh, and yeah, they're going to get their butts whipped in court, I hope. Yeah, they will. Uh, absolutely, no doubt about it. And to the attorney, um, the attorney is not bankrupting the school. Uh, literally, the principal and the superintendent are engaged in conduct to bankrupt their own school district. All right, we'll follow as it continues to update.